there is one good restaurant in town whose prices are fair and whose quality is good. Occasionally, for a treat, it would be nice to go have a modest meal at a restaurant. But I've heard this from several sources, and having lived in Kentucky and southern Indiana for a while, I can confirm from just conversations I've had with folks that this is true. Back in the days before the Civil Rights Movement, and even to some extent today, there was a tradition among some African American people in the South, particularly in the Deep South. It was common then and occasionally now for African Americans to be referred to as boy and girl by the white people who employed them, by white authorities such as cops, judges, etc. And even children would call grown adults boy or girl. African Americans were also habitually referred to by their first name only. It was a demeaning situation. With everything else that was going on, it may seem like a small thing to be called a boy or a girl compared to being lynched, but it was an attitude. It was a mindset. They could do nothing about it, of course. They couldn't protest about it. They couldn't request that an employer call them Mr. or Ms. so-and-so or not refer to them as a boy or a girl. It was demeaning and demoralizing and infantilizing. When they were among their own people and could clean up, they dressed well as well as they could afford. Latin Americans... Native Americans, uh, Asian Americans, when they are on their own time, they would dress as well as they could. This usually included bright colors, shiny fabrics, twinkly things, if at all possible, because it was traditional from their homelands. Now, white people would laugh at this and say it was tawdry and cheap looking. But it comes from really old traditions, you know, red and purple, for instance, were colors only the royalty could afford. And when cheap purple dyes came to the United States, often, not exclusively, but often would dress in purple because it was a color of royalty. This, of course, was just another excuse for white people to be insulting and to laugh and to sneer and to look down on people of color for their clothing. A lot of times, African Americans had to either sew their own clothes or repair hand-me-downs and rags. So on Saturday, people would do work in their own house, a whole week's worth of work, chores, and then bathe for Sunday, and Sunday was the day to be dressed and dressed well. When I go to town, I always dress well. Dress well. I may be in line with people in really grubby, dirty clothing, or wearing their pajama bottoms and fuzzy slippers, or bra straps exposed, or cheap, bland, ugly clothing that telegraphs to everybody around, I don't give a damn. When I go to town, like I did today, I'm bathed, and you know for me bathing is a big deal. I can only do it every two or three days because it's a tremendous chore to haul in the water and cook it. But it's a hard procedure for me to bathe. My hair looks as good as I can do it. And I always wear something clean and presentable. Generally, I wear something traditionally feminine so that I can be camouflaged and not stand out. One time in a food stamps office in Louisville, Kentucky, I heard the workers discussing me as I walked away after I had to apply for food stamps. I was living in a homeless shelter. The clothing I wore came out of the dumpster of the homeless shelter, which also ran a thrift store. And they discarded a lot of clothing, some of it very good quality. It was a cold, snowy day. I was wearing a pure wool jumper over a really nice blouse, and I was wearing a 
suede leather coat with a real fur collar, all from the dumpster, and a pair of nice burgundy boots, leather boots from the dumpster. And I heard the food stamps worker say, she don't need no food stamps, she dresses better than we do. And I went back and I told them that the clothes had come from the dumpster. And I showed them some hand-sewn repairs I'd made where there were holes in the jumper that I was wearing. There's another tradition. I don't know about other cultures or ethnic groups within the United States, but I do know about this about African Americans in the South and the Deep South. On their own time, among their own people, African Americans would refer to each other by their last name. Unless they were very close friends, or unless it was somebody's child or child relative because they never got to have their own surnames in public and they weren't treated with respect. To this day, there's a programmer at the radio station in Albuquerque where I used to volunteer the public radio station that broadcasts all over the state. This man hosts a music show on Monday afternoons, the only African-American freeform music show. I refer to him by his last name. I do it out of habit. I do it because it's a sign of respect. Today I went to that local restaurant and I looked around for a newspaper before I was going to seat myself. There was a man sitting at a small booth near the front with a laptop and with my back turned to him he said something like, how you doing sweetie? I didn't know he was talking to me and I didn't acknowledge him and he said, how are you doing? And I said, I'm fine. Who are you? And he didn't answer me. And I said, who are you? And he didn't answer me. My server came to take my order and I asked who the man was and she told me that was the owner. I said, I'm 57 years old. I come here for a break. My landlord gets half my income to live in a cesspool. I don't get much respect in this town because I'm so low income. Living on $700 a month means I live on less than $150 a week and I get $3 a day food stamps. So after the landlord is paid, I have $10 a day to live on plus $3 a day food. It's a horrible grubby little town where people only respect money. I told her when I come into that restaurant, I don't want to be addressed as sweetie. I'm not his girlfriend and I'm not his daughter. I expect to be addressed as ma'am. To me, there's no difference than if I came in with black skin and he said to me, how you doing darky? Because where he comes from, that's a term of endearment to black people. It's degrading. It's demoralizing and it's disrespectful. She made excuses for him, which is what we do. We make excuses for them. Oh, he didn't mean it that way. He didn't mean it that way. I said, it, I don't care what his motive was for doing that. I need to be treated with respect when I'm spending money. I excused myself. I said, this has been emotionally hard on me and I've lost my appetite, so I'm going to leave. Please ask him not to do that. In the interim, between those two parts of the conversation, she went into the kitchen, he went into the kitchen, and he gave off this little growl, like I was some ball-busting man-hater. I was near tears. I never raised my voice. I never spoke disrespectfully. I just insisted that I'd be addressed as ma'am. This seems like a very small thing, I realize. But when you're poor, you barely get to have dignity. And you seldom get any respect. You're always in danger from everything from security guards for just innocently walking through a store or a mall, to cops who just want to harass you to social service workers. Townspeople behave as though we are lazy when in fact we work harder than they do. Our lives are much harder. I had a really bad scare this week.
my truck began making a ghastly sound. I can't tell you how frightened I was that I would have to spend the money I'm trying to hoard that people sent me so that I could move. I was terrified it was going to be something like a water pump, and a new water pump would co cost close to $1,000, and then there's the hassle of installing it. Even if it were my fan belt, I have a serpentine belt that basically runs everything in the truck. It's not like one belt from the uh, radiator fan to the alternator and another one to, you know, it was, it's all one big belt. I got very lucky. You know, I have nobody to help me here. There is a man repairing an, a single wide trailer on the other side over here for his mother to live in. And I complimented him because he's been doing all the work himself and it's looking really good over there. And the place looked awful when I first moved here. Um, and he's been working really hard, really fast, and it's really looking nice. So I complimented him and I point out, pointed out things that I noticed, like the new iris bed and so on. Then I told him about my truck and I said, do you know a mechanic? He said, well, I can work on small things. When he got a chance for a break after his coffee, he came over and his son, grown son, climbed the fence, jumped over into the yard, and his son got under the truck. All that was wrong was my starter was very, very loose. It was really amazing that it would start at all. Between my tools and his ratchet handle, the kid got it working in about 20 minutes. I gave him 20 bucks. I know that's an exorbitant amount of money for such a little amount of work, but I want to make sure that the kid's around in case I need him for a future um, project. But the demoralization, the feeling that I'm trapped here and I can't ever leave, it really was sickening. I'm 57 years old, and one of the ways people insult me, they think, is to call me old. They don't do it with people like Vokter or uh, the Mud Broker or other men my age who show their faces on their YouTube videos. But apparently, I'm not supposed to have anything to say because I'm female and older. And so, therefore, I guess not sexually attractive, and so, therefore, nothing I have to say is of any interest. And that's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. I'm only 57, and I can, t can t anticipate that I will have to deal with that for the rest of my life. In addition to the presumption that I don't know how tools work or mechanical devices work or can't make rational decisions simply because I'm female. And then there will be the prejudice also that because I'm getting older that I'm not in my right mind. Words matter. I'm probably going to take a lot of shit for putting this video up for having said that. How we treat each other matters. It was a $5 breakfast I was looking at. They have some half price, basically half portion specials during the week. It was either going to be a plate of pancakes or a little, or not a little, big burrito with a glass of juice. But I went to McDonald's and I got two McDoubles. They're a dollar each, little hamburgers with two hamburger patties. Weasel gets one hamburger patty, and then I eat the rest of the one whole hamburger and the one half a hamburger. They called me ma'am. 